Hey, here's a few quick tips for placing and editing walls in Foundry. If you need to lay down a bunch of walls that switch types as you go, sometimes it's faster to just lay them all down as regular walls and then come back and change things into the types that you need them to be instead of having to swap between tools as you go. To chain out walls, start dragging the first segment, then hold down the control key or command on the Mac and while you hold it down, just do single left clicks to continue placing wall segments. When you're finished, before you place the last segment, let go of the command or control key and then place the last one with just a left click. If your scene uses a foundry grid, you can turn on the force snap to grid tool, which will make sure that every single segment is locked exactly to a grid intersection. With the force grid snapping off, you'll be able to place points starting from non-intersection locations, but they will still snap to a subgrid. If you try to put something uh, off of the subgrid, it will snap to an invisible place. This is to help with getting your nodes to line up. If there wasn't subgrid snapping, then these two being put together would not automatically line up in the same place. You can disable the subgrid at any time by holding down the shift key as you drop the node and it will place exactly where you left it. But of course, if you're doing that and trying to get nodes to align, if you hold down shift while you're doing it, they won't perfectly snap together. If you spend a bunch of time making a set of walls that could work in more than one place, don't forget you can copy and paste elements on the canvas. So control C or command C on the Mac and control V over where you want it. You'll probably miss, but you can always drag select grab a node, and move things into place. If you've got a passage that crosses over top of another passage, use secret doors to manipulate the walls. When my players are up here, I have these two doors open so that they can pass right through. They, of course, don't see these because they're secret. And then if the player ends up being down on this level, I can open these two doors, close these two, and now they have a path straight through. Consider backing off your walls from the art edges of the map to give a little more breathing room and to show off more of the walls themselves. In this section up here, I've followed closely the edges of the map art, but when you're actually playing, there's not much to see of the walls. It's fairly boring and doesn't give a sense of the cavern itself. Compared to down here, where there's much more generous wall margins, it's a different feeling for sure. Another benefit of this is giving a bit more room to move around in tight corridors. Something like this little passage here would be very difficult for players to navigate through with the keyboard had you walled it really tightly, but with the walls back a nice generous amount, it gives you freedom to move around, especially if there's combat in the area. Use group selection to edit multiple walls at once. The group select counts walls if they are more than halfway inside the box. So this one will miss that first wall. But if I start the box over here, it'll grab it. And similarly, if I continue the selection box past the halfway point of this last segment, it'll grab it as well. Double click to edit them all at once. One way walls can be kind of hard to remember which is which. I like to think of it as the arrow is running into the wall. So a token that is down here will run into this wall and not be able to pass it. In addition to drag selecting, you can also alt-click any node to select an entire contiguous chain. You can do some fun things with light containment with walls that block light in one direction. The Clone Walls tool works by absorbing the configuration of the last wall type you moved or laid down. So if I want to absorb this configuration and build some more with it, when I'm on the Clone Walls tool, if I move a node of the type that I want to use and then start drawing, I will now be drawing with that same type. You can use Terrain Walls with their Movement Restriction disabled to provide incremental reveals of areas.
you can test your wall's movement restrictions with keyboard controls. Normally as a GM you can drag a token anywhere, even past a wall, but if you're using your keyboard to move, it will respect the wall's boundaries as if you were a player. If you're trying to select a segment for editing and when you point at its node, it's highlighting a different segment, all you need to do is mouse over the segment you want, and then when you go back to the node, it'll be highlighting the correct segment. All right, that's it for now. Happy walling.